Hello, welcome to physics class. My name is Oluji Gibre. This morning we'll be talking about elastic property of solid. Elastic property of solid. Now, here are the objectives of this topic. At the end of this topic, you should be able to explain the elastic property of substance. State Oak's law and show understanding of the term stress, strain, elastic limit, and young modulus. So simple problem on work done in stretching or compressing a spring and elastic string. Now, what is elasticity? Elasticity is the ability of a substance, ability of a substance, to regain its original size and shape. Underline the word size and shape after being distorted by an external force. It's just the ability. Not every substance has the ability. For example, wood cannot be does not have the elastic ability elasticity ability. Now an elastic material is one that regains its original shape and size after the starting force has been removed. Now, take for instance your rubber band. By the time you stretch along this line, it will be elongated. After these forces have been removed, it will come back to its original size. We call that rubber band an elastic material because it has the ability to regain its original size and shape therefore we call it an elastic it has elasticity now oops law gives relationship between force applied to an or stretch string and the amount of spring stretched now look at it's just telling the relationship between force and E. Now, this is the original length of this spring when it has not been stretched. Now, when a mass is hung to its end, look at the new length now. You can see it has been what? Stretched out. Now, the difference between this length and this length is what we call extension. If this one is L, L2, I call this one. L1. The difference between them, L2 minus L1 is what we call extension. Now, here is the law. Hooke's law states that provided elastic limit is not exceeded, extension E of the material is directly proportional to the load of force or applied force. We can call it load, we can call it force. Now, mathematically, this is what Hooke's law was talking about. F is proportional to what? E. And we know E to be extension. And E equals to changing length, that is L2 minus L1. Now, it can be written as F equals to KE. Where K is the force constant. This is the gradient in Newton per meter and is so force is unique for each spring. And this is the extension of the spring. F is the force applied. Now K is called force constant. Force constant. It is different for every elastic material, be it spring or string. Every spring has their own force constant. Now, look at this is a spring of this is the first x, this is the original length. This is the original length. When a ball of this size is hung on it, this is F. X is produced. We can use X, we can use E, as the case may be, depending on which one you are convenient with. Now, when 
the ball is increased twice twice the size of the original you can see the length in the length the extension also increased to two that is as f increase extension also increases that is if you have 10 newton and you produce two meter as extension by the time you move to 20 newton it will have been four meter that is the relationship Oaks was trying to establish between force and extension. It takes twice as much force to stretch a spring twice as far. Now, this is an experiment to demonstrate the relationship between force and extension. Now, this is the spring. It has this is a slotted weight on on it. Let's say the original length was on one by the time this length is on is now on two that means your e1 equals to one meter you find e2 for every increased force then you tabulate your reading let's say f this is e this diagram is just telling you how to set up an experiment to demonstrate the relationship between force and extension. Let's say the force weight or the force weight or force is 10 Newton and you produce E to be 1 meter. The next time when the F is 250 Newton, let's say this one is also 1.5 and so like that. By the time you have, let's say, five observations, you now plot the graph of f against extension this is the graph of what we what we will have now when you find the slope the slope is the force constant now the slope of the graph is the force constant or elastic constant now elastic constant or stiffness is the is required to give unit extension that is from this point to this point, that is, from this point to this point, is proportionality line. Anything after that can cause damage to the spring. Now, look at from yet to from A O to A is the elastic is proportional limit that is a point where a point is called OA is called proportional limit that is this point where whose law is obeyed that is F is proportional to E when you increase F E also increases why a is the elastic limit anything after a can cause damage to the spring or string now b is called yield point now this is yield point is the point beyond the elastic limit which the elastic material has yielded all its elasticity permanently and become plastic that is, when you have a small spring, like the one you have in your small, small radio. Now, by the time you apply little force, the spring will still be able to come back to its original size. But anything beyond this point, you now see the spring now behave like ordinary wire. At that point, we say it has become plastic. Now, we now have elastic limit. Is the limit force is the limit of force beyond which the stretch wire does not return to its original length when the force is removed that time it will not be able to regain it will just stay permanently to that new length unlike this one you can see it's still coy but that elastic property has been lost but by the time you now get to elastic limit beyond elastic limit it will now look like ordinary wire.
that is that on this graph now example a force of 0.8 newton stretch an elastic spring by 2 cm now let's say this is the spring you now hang 0.8 newton load at the back now let's say from here to here is the original length let me use l now when the load has been hung e has been produced you can see that now we know that from our formula of Hooke's law f equals to ke now what is our force 0.8 we are looking for elastic constant, which is K. Don't forget, always convert centimeter to meter. That is 2 all over 100. That is 2 all over 100. When you cross multiply, it will be 2K equals to 100 times 0 0.8. That is 80. 80. Now, K equals to 80 all over 2, which is equals to 40 Newton per meter. Because we have succeeded in converting this 2 to meter from here. That is how to find the elastic constant of a spring. Make use of this formula always when dealing with elastic or Hooke's law. Example 2. A force of 2 Newton stretch an elastic material by 30 mm. Now, this is our E. E equals to you convert it back to meter. You divide it by 1000. Now, F equals to KE. Look at, at this point, what additional force will stretch the material? You have to use these two parameters to get your K force before you can now use it. To find the force on this one. Now, F equals to KE. Our F equals to 2. We don't have K. We have to first of all get the force constant if it is not given. 30 all over 1000. Now, 0 cancel 0. 2 equals to 3K all over 100. Cross multiply. K equals to 200 all over 3. Now, what additional force will stretch the material by 35 millimeter? Now, we have not, we have not been given another extension. You know, when you increase the force, the extension will also increase. Now, we have, what are we looking for that is force. What additional force F equals to? We now have our KE to be 200 all over 3. Our new extension is now E, that is 35 all over 1000. 200 year, 200 year 5. 5 year 1, 5 year 7. Is that taking that will be two point seven divided three will be two point five seven divided by three. Now your answer is two point three three newton. Now since we are asked to calculate the additional force, you subtract. 2.33 minus 2. 
which is equals to 0 0.33 newton. That is the additional force you are looking for. The first thing to do is calculate from these two parameters, calculate your force constants. After which, you now use the force constant with this new extension to find the additional force. Since it is being added, you subtract 2.33 from the original force to Newton before you can then get your additional force. Now, Young Modulus. Now, look at this diagram. About an elastic material. Look at this is the force applied. This is the force applied. Force is being applied to both ends. By the time it's being applied, the length has been increased. Now, you can see this is the original length. This is the new length. Now, there is small, there is an increase of E, which we call extension. Now, by the time you add the new length, the original length plus extension, it will give you the new length. We call this one new length. This is original length. Now, the ratio of force to the area is called stress or tensile stress. That is, the force you apply to this face and the cross-sectional area of this material, this is the cross-sectional area, this black surface, this black face is this cross-sectional area. You can see A. That is, the ratio F all over A, that is force all over area, will give you the stress. That is, the stress this material has undergone. Now, look at, by the time you elongate, you see that the thickness would have been decreased. The thickness would have been decreased. Now, the ratio of the extension to original length is called tensile strain. Then, Hooke's law can be rewritten as stress is proportional to strain. Now, we said the ratio of extension, that is E, all over L. This will give us the tensile strain. That is, when you elongate any elastic material, you can use a rubber band or any rubber material at home. Just try and stretch out. Look at the thickness. You see that the thickness would have been reduced to what it was before force is being applied. Now, stress is proportional to strain, provided elastic limit is not exceeded. Now, look at the constant, the constant of proportionality in this statement is what we call Young Modulus. Now, look at, this is the symbol for stress, and this is the symbol for strain. By the time you put E, E is the constant of proportionality. Now, this is our formula to calculate Young Modulus. Young Modulus is just trying to, to, to relate the two stress, the two strain that is, that the elastic material is undergoing, it, it now arrive at this formula that is E equals to all over epsilon. Now, look at this is the stress and this is strain. like we have in the previous slide. Now, work done in elastic spring and string. The energy stored in spring and string is elastic potential. That is, work done in elastic material equals elastic potential. Now, every spring you have, they have energy stored inside them. When it has original length, the potential elastic energy equals to zero. But when it has undergone some kind of ex distortion, this is the formula to calculate the elastic potential energy. Now, note, 
Potential energy or elastic energy is also called work done. Also called work, work done. Now, here is the formula. Work done equals to average force times distance. And you know average force is initial plus final all over two times distance. In this case, the distance we are talking about is the extension. That is 1 over 2 times F times E. Now, from Hooke's law, we know F equals to KE. Now, 1 over 2 times KE times E. That was how we got our PE or work done equals to 1 over 2 times KE squared. This is the formula with which you will be calculating work done or elastic, elastic, elastic potential elastic energy in string and spring. Example, a spring is stretched 40 millimeter by a force of 15 newton. What is the work done by the force? You can see, work done equals to 1 over 2 Fe. And what is our Fe? We have been given the force and the extension. Don't forget to always convert your millimeter to meter. That is 40 divided by 1000. That was how we got 0 0.04. By the time you multiply, you have 0 0.3 joules. That is how to calculate work done in a stretch spring. Example 2. A spiral spring is compressed by 0.2. Look at the spring. It's a, let's say this is spring. Instead of stretching out, it was being compressed inside. You know, the length, this is original length. By the time it is being compressed, this is what the length will now become like now. Calculate the energy stored in the spring. If the force constant is 400 newton per meter, you can see here. You are using extension. You are using extension. You know, in this case, it is compression and force constant. So you still use the same formula, but you now substitute for F. That is K E squared. Now, what is your K? K is 400 and your extension is 0 0.02. By the time you Multiply all together, you have 0 0.08 joule. Now, look at this question. A stone of mass 20 gram is released from a catapult whose rubber has been stretched 4 cm. If the force constant is 200 newton per meter, calculate the velocity with which the stone leaves the catapult. I believe we all know catapult is like this with two with rubber that's such that when you pull back you see that the rubber will be stretched and the rubber has been stretched four centimeter now this is where we now use energy conversion that is potential energy is equals to kinetic energy because this one has velocity the stone now has velocity the energy stored in the rubber is now being converted to kinetic energy that's why we now say potential elastic energy equals to kinetic energy i believe you are all familiar with this formula this other formula which is formula for kinetic energy 1 over 2 k e square equals to 1 over 2 m v square. By the time you substitute for k, k is 200. k is 200 newton. 1 over 2 times 200 times 4 all over 1000. You have to convert centimeter to meter. 4 all over 100 square equals to you convert gram to kilogram that is 1000 
times v squared. Now, when you this we cancel away. Now, two hundred times one thousand divided by two hundred. Your answer will be the square root of four meter per second. If you can undo this, please. It's very very simple. Just cancel out, and you have your answer to be the square root of sixteen. Now, assignment. A stone of mass 5 gram is projected with a rubber catapult. If the catapult is stretched through a distance of 7 cm by an average force of 70 Newton, calculate the instantaneous velocity of the stone. You just use 1 over 2 Ke square equals to 1 over 2 mv square you then calculate your velocity you can see you have been given the distance but you can use 1 over 2 fe since you are giving force and the extension because there is no k there you can use 1 over 2 fe equals to 1 over 2 mv square a spring constant 1500 newton is acting by is acted by a cons force constant of 75 newton calculate the potential energy stored in the spring you can see you have force and force constant you do the you, do, you use the, the appropriate formula there you know that one over two fe so substitute for your ke for your F, you have F E or potential energy equals to half K E square. Example th assignment three. A spring 20 centimeter long is stretched to 25 centimeter. Now this is L1 and this is L2. You just subtract to get your extension by a load of 15 newton what will be the new length when stretched by 100 newton assuming that elastic limit is not exceeded now for further reading and more exercise get new secondary school physics by anyakua page 93 till i come your way next time have enjoy your day